Hello and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page. My name is Dante Rene, and this is the YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Tonight's film is 1972's Jess Franco's Demons, put out by Redemption. This is the Blu-ray uh, that came out uh, in the past year or so, I think, something like that. And this is put out by Redemption Blu-ray from the original 35mm uh, Elements. Um, in HD, and uh, this is the back right here, and uh, of course we have Howard Vernon in this film, but we also have uh, just the amazing uh, redhead Britt Nichols and Anne Liebert, I believe her name is. Oh gosh, uh, those two were also in Virgin Among the Living Dead. So we're looking at the post um, Soledad Miranda time here, uh, you know, since these are the years after, um, and uh, this is Jess Franco's Demons. Uh, first off, I want to uh, just kind of start off by having a couple kind of thematic elements that really are in this film and that you will see or that I've seen in a lot of Jess Franco films. And one of them is is love. And that love is something that is constantly in flux, something that constantly changes. It is something that can change at the drop of a hat. It's something that can change all of a sudden as a result of a sexual act. And predominantly the woman can be completely, can fall in love with a man or a woman um, at the, uh, very quickly, make a, a sudden change to fall in love as a result of sexual bliss. And this can also happen for a man as well. And this is looked at as romance, as something romantic as well. Um, another element uh, that, that, that is seen a lot in this film and that in, in other Franco films as well um, it's predominantly the films that deal with directly uh, Catholicism and, and nuns, and as they would call nunsploitation and things like that, is the element that um, all sexual drive, all sexual uh, love, all sexual impulses, all passion um, is evil, is, um, is of the devil, is bad, morally wrong. Um, so, in essence, what Franco did in his career with art, with cinema, with music, was evil. And these are some of the themes that are in this film, but we're going to go into Jess Franco's Demons from 1972 right now. Here we go. Let's start off, first off, with the music. And the music, it says in the back here, was done by Jean-Bernard Rateau. And i got to tell you, I don't really recognize his name in other Franco films. And this is um, very diverse music, very lush music, very atmospheric music, and uh, very uh, just uh, ethnically diverse and interesting. And, and there are some themes that, that, that constantly show up in similar scenes and for similar characters in this film. We have p uh, emotional piano music. We have uh, very, very doomy uh, tolling organs. Um, we have uh, almost uh, black exploitation, funky, groovy, jazzy music. We have uh, erotic, dark erotic, uh, fusion, funk, jazz music. We have a lot of hand percussion in this score. A lot of hand percussion that is uh, kind of seductive, erotic, but also dark and mysterious and alluring and provocative. Um, so the, the, the music in this film is all over the place. And we also have just uh, very atmospheric, dark music in here. This is really an awesome score to this film. It's very... Um, it's very alluring. It's very interesting to the ears, um, and it's uh, there are themes in this film that are that really stand out that are very recognizable, as, especially as the film goes on. This is a film. This is one of Franco's films that's long. Typically, his films are ninety minutes or under. Um, some of them can be, you know, like seventy minutes, uh, depending on, um, you know different cuts and things like that. But this is one of his longer films. This this clocks in at, at 118 minutes, so pretty much two hours uh, for this one. So it really has a very grandiose uh, feel to the film in terms of the story. And uh, there is a, you know, epic, grandiose, 
lyrical type of vibe to this film because it's two hours and because of that because of those two hours what we what we have here is we really have a lot of characters and a lot of uh, breakdowns of characters and twists and turns that are more that that are slower twists and turns um, and things that kind of develop and side stories but but all of the side stories and everything else really all connect to the main uh to, to, to the main story of the film and you even have some elements of the film where all of a sudden uh, lots of revelations ro lots of things are revealed and then lots of very interesting all of a sudden characters that were not related to each other or all of a sudden in the same room you know there's a scene like that it, so there's a there's a there's a there are a lot of revelations in the, in this story um, Franco's style in this film, um, uh, it reminds me, it, 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 it's a style uh, of, of, uh, of filming or cinematography that he's definitely used many times before, but it, the best way to describe it is Tom Petty's uh, video, Don't Come Around Here No More, that has like the Alice in Wonderland vibe, but it's almost like Coke bottle glasses, like the, like, um, almost like where, um, well, first off, things are hazy, kind of like in a in a you know, hazy on the edges, kind of. But also, um, people's faces, almost like you know what you would see in a dream sequence of a film. People's faces are kind of um, kind of come out into the into the frame, and then everything else kind of zooms back. Um, and then he also has these elements of 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 you know people walking down steps, and and um, kind of everything is kind of. Uh, it's so hard to describe, but but the um, they look larger than life um, around the steps, around the atmosphere. Everything looks they look huge, and then everything kind of looks zoomed back in a way, and it makes this wild kind of tunnel vision or or things kind of around. Uh, it gives a very uh, huge scope. A huge vibe to to the proceedings. Um, he's also doing a lot of reverse zooming in this film, where he starts off very close and then he comes back. Um, and there are a lot of of um, you know very close shots, very beautiful close shots. A lot of amazing architecture in this film. A lot of you know real stone buildings and and uh, buildings that look like they're made out of cement almost remind me of mansion of the living dead or even virgin among the living dead um where you know you you have uh just real architecture real real gardens and 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 real um i almost said rear there is a lot of rear in here and we'll get to that um and um you know just these lush uh, uh kind of period piece structures like where did you get these places from when it was filmed in 1972 you know just amazing locations amazing architecture you know for this film um that really looks because this is a period piece you know this film is a period piece and and uh, you know kind of takes you back and there's even some historic there are historical references in the film and those historical references actually have a lot to do with the revelations in the film the twists and turns in the film but the architecture and everything just it's unbelievable these couldn't be sets i mean these are real places that look like they were frozen in time when we go to the you know basically this is a film about um witchcraft and when they were burning witches you know and we have two sisters um and we have a convent and uh, and possession and the devil himself and the devil's bride um in flesh and uh, we have uh, basically the twists and the turns of the religious uh, versus uh the witches Okay, and I put the quotes on the witches because there's a lot of different things going on in this film. The thing that's very interesting also when you look at Love Letters of a Portuguese Nun that I've also reviewed on this YouTube page is that in these types of films that Franco does, the interesting thing is that witchcraft and the devil is real and it's also not real. And I and I, I don't want to unpack that. I want to also I, I want to let that just kind of simmer because it, it simmers in his films like this, like Love Letters of a Portuguese Nun and also Demons here. And this is a film um, that um, 
it's very sexual and uh, very seemingly blasphemous. Like you could see how dangerous this film is. There's a danger. There's a wild, chaotic, rebellious, lunatic danger to this film. You know, the person making this film. There is there is something crazy going on here. Now, there is a level of class to this film where you could almost see somebody who watches period pieces watching this film. This is a two-hour, you know, uh, epic film. And then, but then you are reminded numerous points in this film that this is a rebel film. This is a Jess Franco film. And those people who are just watching a period piece on witchcraft will all of a sudden leave the room or just be completely disgusted, shocked, or offended. This film um, has... Uh, very interesting. I, You know, obviously Franco films have a lot of... Obviously sexuality is the core... But in this particular film, I don't know if it was because of the of the of the kind of the epic uh, length of the film for a Franco film, two hours. But the sex scenes really felt like they developed more to me, or something. In some weird way, they were more developed, or more like they had more time. And I know that sounds crazy because Franco sex scenes can be longer. But in here, it was almost like they were unfolding more, or something. And you know, we predominantly have lesbian and um, masturbation. And, you know, I got to say that the sex in this film predominantly is um, evidence of possession or demonic influence. And there are also some, there, there, there's some romance in here as well. But the interesting things is that the religious leadership, political religious leadership in this film expresses corruption there is so much corruption in the leadership and then you know so then there is corruption also amongst um you know the people but really it's almost as if the corruption of the religious political leadership is not as bad as the real demonic influence in in uh in society or in in life so it's very very interesting um we have some very creepy sequences in this film. You know, we have, uh, we have, uh, this is very creepy blind woman in the film that kind of sucker punched me and, and as I was looking at her. We have um, some, we have torture sequences in here. Um, we have some very bizarre, something I've never seen before involving a skeleton. Um, it's actually uh, on the cover here in some form or fashion. Um, but uh, kind of uh, demonic skeleton influence uh, that I've never really quite seen before. And we have uh, suicide, and we have uh, really where well, you're questioning the sexual role of a woman, the allure of a woman, versus that allure being demonic, or that allure being a, a sign of the devil. And we have you know, a very creepy, disturbing sequence with a cross on the wall and the devil in human form. A very interesting. Um, the face of the devil is very well picked, very weird. Um, this is a film that has a lot of dialogue, a lot of uh, discovery, because it's two hours. Um, but then there is also a lot of explicitness and wildness. There is a, uh, a lesbian scene near the end of the film, Britt Nichols, that is just unbelievable. Um, a face and a, a butt, and it is just, it's iconic for this film, I would say. I mean, just unbelievable. Um, and there is an erotic nature to this film as well, even though there is this is a uh, witchcraft, uh, evil, demonic type of vibe to the film. There is a uh, all the sexual, all the sexuality has. It's very erotic. It's very uh, uh, the, the the two the two leads, the sisters are, and even some of the other nuns are very sexual. And uh, you know their bodies, their vibes, their beauty. Uh, Anne Liebert's hair, by the way, is unbelievable. I mean, on her head, unbelievable. Um, uh, there is a lot of pubic hair in this film, obviously, in 1972. And um, there is nothing invasive, but i got to say, this is a film where it's not explicit, but it's explicit um, in, in, in tone and what you're seeing. And it's very sexual. And um, this is just Franco's demons, folks. This is just Franco's... The Demons. 1972 put out by Redemption Video. Thank you so much for watching uh, the Ten Room Bizarre YouTube page. Feel free to check out my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopy diarrhea. Thank you and good night.